consummate professionals. Look at oh us go. My God. Look at you. Restful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys, good morning. It's Friday. We're so excited. Mock was like frantically grabbing clips. <laughs> and I was like, you need to go. Oh, God, we only have a minute. Oh, my God. We look at us. We're on time. On time. So and you nervous. guys, you should really try the deep spot corrector because you know you have some Spots. sort of like a, a dark spot on there. So you should try that little dark spot corrector as part of the GenuCell Summer Essentials Package. You can get 70% off right now at GenuCell.com slash chicks. Use code chicks. Do that. And you too will look amazing. <laughs> Your spots will disappear. Get Even rid of those liver ones. Liver, liver spots. Also, um, we did a deep dive this week and we did it on Hollywood, Holly Weird, and um, their strike. I don't know if anybody's even noticed that those people are on strike, <laughs> but they're on strike. I kind of don't care, but um, but we had a nice, lively discussion about that the other day, Mock and I. So you should. I was check trying out. to play devil's advocate, and you did a great. Listen, it you made a lot of really valid points that made my brain go, "Oh, maybe I should care a little bit," you know, but, but not you know, too much. But I cared for about a minute, and then I stopped <laughs> caring again. Right about those ridiculous, insufferable people. Um, but yeah, we did a little back and forth on that. You should check it out tomorrow. You know, like when you guys are gardening or at the gym tomorrow or whatever it is you're doing or just hanging out eating bonbons you should check that out it drops tomorrow Our and you, can, you know that's why you put it you in your pocket right you just in your pocket stuff yeah, it right in exactly. that tool belt <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. um yeah listen we're right out of the gate i hate to do this at 7 32 a.m but we gotta say hide your kids hide your wives, hide your wives hide them because we got some audio to play you that is very, very naughty. We very didn't say naughty. it. We didn't, we didn't we're say not saying it. it. It's not our fault. And Mock was like, should I play this? And I'm like, well, I don't know. We could talk about it, but you might as well just play it. We, we didn't. We're not the ones who said it. So definitely hide your dogs and your kids. Right. Hide everybody. Cats, cats are okay because they can handle it. Yeah. Cats are, cats They're are fine. Business. They're fine. <laughs> right. They're all right. Mm -hmm. uh, but anybody else that would be sensitive to... Mm -hmm saucy language you may want to leave the Please room remove them from the room now right because we got to introduce you to a professor um not a full professor but like a professor light um by the name of marcus venable from lsu and um he was unhappy with a louisiana state senator's decision a vote um, that overrode the governor's veto on a bill to ban child sex changes. So this guy, this professor guy, called and left a really horrifying voicemail for that state senator. And the state senator was alarmed enough by it that he called the cops and said, can you make sure that this guy is not going to come and get me? Right. And then they traced the call to this professor who has now been fired from teaching. He's still allowed to be on campus and do his little graduate work yeah, or whatever. He's still a graduate person, but, but which is crazy to me. Yeah. When you it's hear crazy. this, you're going to be like, this guy, this is insane. He's unhinged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, mm -hmm. it's language, language warning. Right. We've uh, warned you. Yes. But yeah, we've warned you as many times as we can warn you. I will just let you hear it now. Here we go. I just wanted to say congratulations to our state senator. Big Mike Spacey and that fucking moron voted to make things worse for people who are already suffering. You fat fucking piece of shit. You did not produce any goddamn evidence to support the claims you made about people being harmed by transgender care. Yet we have tons of empirical evidence showing that it's an increased suicide risk when people don't get this care. So you, you big fat headed motherfucker, I can't wait to read your name in the fucking obituary. I will make a goddamn martini made from the tears of butthurt conservatives when we your fucking ass in the ground, you fat fucking useless piece of shit. Fuck you. I hope you have a terrible day. Fuck yourself. God. He seems normal. <laughs> That's normal behavior. Oh and and I know this is gonna be a shock to everybody, but he teaches in the sociology department. <laughs> I know no everybody ever thought shocked and dismayed by that information. <laughs> yeah. He's going to, he wanted wow. to be a sociologist. So there's that for you. 
God, yeah. mm-hmm. what a freaking lunatic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I had retweeted that yesterday morning and I had tagged LSU and I was like, so you guys are going to fire him, right? Like, this is not okay. This is not normal behavior. <laughs> so I was glad to see this morning that they actually had done that. I don't know he why still, they allow him on campus. Right. But- he still take classes. He's still going to graduate. I mean, I mean, I guess, cause what are they going to, I guess they can't do, really do anything about that. Right. But this is the SEC now, right? This is, I mean, <laughs> I went to an SEC school and I'm looking at this going, this is, this is the SEC. This is the university is system as yeah. a whole. I mean, I just, I was just having a conversation with my daughter yesterday about college and I'm like, man, they're going to try to like indoctrinate you when you get there. You have to be strong of mind if she chooses to go to college. I mean, they're going to try to get her and put their claws in her. And these are the type of people, this guy is the type of person that is teaching at our universities. Yep. Everybody be scared. For real. I mean, that is freaking mm-hmm. insane. Right. Insane. Um, also, huge apologies uh to three people who i noticed their super chats or super stickers or whatever youtube calls them um i noticed them coming in as we were talking yesterday and then i completely spaced on thanking them so i wrote down your names so that i could thank you today thank you so much to pamela to shelly ethington um, and to Luke, thank you so much. And I'm very, very guys. sorry that we did not mention you yesterday when those super stickers came in. I hate it when we yeah. miss them. We got on a roll. Um, we got on, on a yeah, roll we and we're old and I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. Sorry, you guys. So very, very uh, sorry yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So before we get to the hearing yesterday, what an extraordinary uh, hearing it was. And if you missed it, if you missed the censorship hearing uh, chaired by Jim Jordan, I were delighted to present to you today lots and lots of highlights. But uh, before we get to that, I have something to tell you about a seminar that our friend Zach Abraham from Bulwark Capital Management is going to be hosting for free This is a free live webinar, not seminar, webinar uh, that he is hosting on July 25th at 3 Pacific. So I think that's noon Eastern. So again, mark your calendar. That's Tuesday. Tuesday, July 25th at noon Eastern, 3 Pacific time. He is going to be hosting uh, this to tell people about risk management when it comes to their finances and active management of their portfolios and why risk management and active management are so important. So um, I'll just tell you the bullet points of what you might learn if you attend the free webinar. He's going to explain how Bulwark Capital's investment and retirement planning process is protecting retirement portfolios against loss. That is their number one focus. Um, And it's a hugely transparent look into their into the bulwark investment strategy. So he's going to show what str- what their strategy has done over 2022 as well as in previous years and he's also going to talk about why the the very traditional um often touted basic 60 40 stock bond mix is a risk in today's inflationary environment. So lots of good stuff to learn. If you want to sign up, you can go to knowyourriskradio.com and you can get all the information about that webinar right there on his website. So knowyourriskradio.com. Again, the webinar is July 25th at noon Eastern and you can sign up at the website. So check that out. All right, uh, let's get right into it. So there were, (laughs) it was a... Wow. It was quite a hearing yesterday, you guys. So it started off with, and remember, uh, one of the key witnesses uh, that was testifying yesterday during this hearing was RFK Jr., who is a Democrat. I don't, I just feel like that we need a reminder about that sometimes. Yeah. Um, And he's a Democrat. He was just treated so poorly by his fellow Democrats in that hearing that it was extraordinary. And it started right out of the gate. In fact, before he even spoke, there were two representatives in particular, Plaskett, I think her name's Stephanie, right? Yes, I believe so. Uh Stephanie Plaskett, who's not even a representative. She's a delegate from, what island is she from? I forget. She's- um, Oh God, oh God. I knew you were going to put me on the spot like this. Is it? Um, no, it's, it's definitely not Guam. Um, somebody, oh God, somebody tell us. I totally Where's forgot. Where's she from, you guys? Is it like, I just don't even remember, but she's a delegate from- An island. Islands. <laughs> some islands. Some Virgin Islands. It's the, the Virgin, Virgin Islands. Islands. US okay. Virgin Islands. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyway, she was absolutely out of control um, through the whole thing. But at the beginning, she was very upset because apparently she saw somewhere in the record or in the agenda that RFK Jr. was going to be allowed 10 minutes for his opening <gasps> statement. And this infuriated her. <sighs> OK, so you're going to hear her take that up with Chairman Jim Jordan. Here it is. Stacey. Excuse me, point of order. Stacey. I know that witnesses usually have five minutes. I see 10 minutes on the board. Is it right. going to be 10 minutes? We'll for give him five witness? minutes, but we're, we're pretty lax with this. Uh, we'll let him go for we a are? little. Yeah. We've, I've seen you ham, 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 gavel down on quite a number of witnesses. We've given senators and former Democrat members of Congress and all kinds He's of folks. Neither. He's neither. He's neither. I'm just saying in past history. Okay. In okay. But we'll, Let's we'll give, just we'll watch give you the time for all the witnesses. And then. if you want to cut him off and censor him some more, you're welcome to do it. Oh, that's not my <laughs> job. That's that's your job. Why don't you threaten a witness so that they can Mr. not want to be Mr. a witness? Kennedy is recognized for his opening statement. God, maybe what? five minutes more or less, and then we'll move to the next one. Mr. I mean, can just, you even with her? Yeah, she's terrible. She's just an awful, awful <laughs> human being problems oh my god yeah she's just a piece of work isn't she mm -hmm. wow stacy plaskett yes stacey. yeah sorry i we but i'm just i don't i guess i just don't care i remove files very very quickly about people that i despise <laughs> no, she just sat she is just a, a an evil spirited woman like the whole time yesterday she just yeah that she it's awful. Her yeah. and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Oh my God. What a complete hag. So then the next point of order was by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who was mad that RFK Jr. was going to be allowed to speak at a censorship hearing. We can't see like, it. Just process that. You can't see any of that now. <laughs> and you know, and the thing is, is that they made themselves look like morons. Oh my God. Both they of these women found themselves. Yeah. Both these women, again, it's just yet another hearing where they just look insane. And there are people like, if you go yesterday, I went to Twitter and you know, how I do, I read the comments, mm -hmm. even Democrats are starting like I, some Democrats, not the crazy, like, but some Democrats are looking at this and going, this is cr like, why just let him speak? You know what I mean? Just let yeah. the guy speak. It's nuts. What they're doing. So here's Debbie with her point of order. Now, I don't I'm not playing the entire, you know, the all the voting that took place because she entered this motion to basically dismiss his entire testimony. And then everybody on the committee had to vote for it. The good news is that they were all like, your motion is stupid and we're tabling it because you're just being an idiot. Um, so the good news is that she didn't get anywhere with this. But the fact that she tried it is bad enough. Here she is. I'd like to raise I'd like to raise a point of order. General Lady, state a point of order. Point of order pursuant to House Rule 11, Clause 2, which Mr. Kennedy is violative of, I move that we remove into an executive session because Mr. Kennedy has repeatedly made despicable anti Semitic and anti Asian comments <laughs> as recently as last week. Rule 11, Clause 2 says, whenever it is asserted by a member of the committee that the evidence or testimony at a hearing may tend to defame, degrade, or incriminate any person, or it is asserted by a witness that the evidence or testimony that the witness would give at a hearing may tend to defame, degrade, or incriminate the witness, and it goes on. Mr. Kennedy, uh, among many other things, has said, I know a lot now about bioweapons. We put out hundreds of millions of dollars in, into ethnically targeted microbes. The Chinese have done the same thing. In fact, COVID-19, there is an argument that it is ethnically targeted. COVID-19 attacks certain races disproportionately. The races that are most immune to COVID-19 are- The lady making motion or speech? I, and I've made a motion to move into executive session because Mr. Mr. Kennedy's testimony- Mr. Chairman, I move to table the motion. The gentleman from Kentucky has moved to table. Mr. 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 The Chairman, the I ask for a roll call vote on the, on the motion to table. Well, let me ask the question. The question is on the motion to table. The gentlelady has asked for a roll call vote. The clerk will, will have to- Step back for a second. The clerk will have to come in. We'll call the roll on the motion to table, and then we can get back to testimony. And they tabled it because it was freaking stupid because she's an idiot. And the, <sighs> listen, if, if you want to talk about the stuff that he said about all that, he just cited some stuff. That's all he did. He, he has citations. He just cited some stuff, and then people are like, I say people, Democrats, including her, you're racist. You're an anti-Semite. You're this, you're that. He's just like, I'm just giving you some statistics and some yeah. data. That's all I'm doing. And then he, and for some reason in this country, we're not allowed to do that anymore. It's like, it's, 
it, according to Democrats, moving. yeah, according to people on the left. And these are the people historically who used to believe in free speech, right? Used to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case anymore at all. Because again, nope. they were so in the business of censoring during the censorship hearing mm -hmm. that it was pretty extraordinary. So RFK uh, Jr. finally had a chance to defend himself against some of these ridiculous charges. And naturally, he was very vigorously defending himself and he had every right to. Here is part of that. I didn't say those things. There's fragments that I said, but I denounce anybody who, is, who uses the words that I have said to imply something that is negative about people who are Jewish. I never said those things. And I want to point out also that the chairman pointed to Dennis Kucinich is fighting behind me. There is no two people in, in the country who feel differently about more differently about American politics than these two people. <laughs> and yet they were friends. Dennis attended his children's basketball games, attended his daughter's wedding. This is what we need, how we need to start treating each other in this country. We need to be able to talk. And, and the First Amendment was not written for easy speech. It was written for the speech that nobody likes you for. And I was, I was censored not just by the Democratic administration. I was censored by the Trump administration. I was the first person censored by the, as the chairman pointed out, by the Biden administration two days after it came into office. It ordered a truthful, and by the way, they had to invent a new word called malinformation to, to, to censor people like me. Hey, there was no misinformation on my Instagram account. Everything I put on that account was cited and sourced. Right. The peer-reviewed publications or government databases. Nobody has ever pointed to a single piece of misinformation that I publish. I was removed for something they called malinformation. Malinformation is information that is true, but is inconvenient to the government that they don't want people to hear. I love that. I love yeah. that line. You know, it's I, I like I was telling you before we went on. I I know this sounds like I'm being like hy like hyperbolic, but I um I, I feel like this. Like when I was watching this yesterday, it's one of the most important speeches that I've heard in the 15 years we've been doing this. I mean, I hate to say that because he's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I hate to say it also because he's a Kennedy, you know? But there's but there was a part of me yesterday that was listening to the stuff he was saying, especially in his opening. And I, I related to it because you and I have been on the receiving end of censorship. Mm -hmm. And we worry every day. We talk to you guys about it. We're like, listen, we're going to get shut down. We're going to have to go to locals. You know, it's like, we should not have that fear in the right. United States of America ever. We should be able to say whatever we damn well please on any platform. That's America. And so when I was listening to this yesterday, I'm like, I cannot believe we are at the place we are at. We have been doing, you and I have been doing this for almost 15 years and I, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. It's like frogs in a, in a pot of boiling water. People are okay somehow with censorship now. It, the left is, mm -hmm. and then, and the right, and listen, he's preaching to really the Democrats. He's preaching to his own side. I'm wondering when this guy's going to get freaking red pilled, but he's preaching to his own side. And I, I, I was sitting there yesterday and I'm thinking to myself, this is such an incredibly important 10 minute spiel that he's giving. And I don't know if people understand how important it is because our, our rights are so uh, we're, we're just on the precipice. You guys, like we are, you have no idea how close we are to losing just one more, two more, all, all of our rights to do what we want to do to be, we're, we're losing our freedom every single day. It's being eroded. Well, and, and for sure, everybody should listen. I mean, go and find his actual entire opening and listen to it because, you know, I, I'm picking some, parts and pieces from that and from other interactions that he had with members of the committee. But the whole, you know, the whole thing in, in one chunk is what you really need to hear. Right. And, and furthermore, I just, I want to, I want to add, he's right about us being able to talk to one another 15, 20 years ago. I mean, if you remember back in the eighties, those guys could totally do that. Yeah. In the nineties, they could do it today. It's so different. We're so incredibly divided. We hate one another. 
We absolutely despise one another. We're on so different spectrums. Like I, I, it's, it's palpable. And so, I mean, I don't know if there's any coming back, but he's trying, like, it's at least this guy is saying, can we at least recognize like where we are? And I, I'd like him for that. Yeah. Well, and unfortunately for him, you know, so much of what he has said when he's in interviews is so easy to grab a clip and then just run with it instead totally. of listening to the entire context of right. what he's saying. And it's so that's used against him so unfairly um, that it's just it's just mind blowing it's that it's happening against, by his own party. It's used against everybody nowadays unfairly. Yeah. And I think that's why he resonates with so many of us because so many of the little things like like being called a racist and an anti semit right. How many times have you and I been called racist? I mean, it I used to sting. <laughs> it used to sting when somebody called me a racist. I thought that was the worst thing ever when we first started our site in 2009. Now I'm like, I mean, every day we're called racist just because <laughs> I'm a conservative. I'm like, whatever. It has no meaning to me now. Because Democrats use that when they don't want to have any discussions with you and they have no intelligent discourse to offer whatsoever. They call you a racist. They play the racist card, the homophobe card, the transphobe card. That's what they do. They throw it all out and they try to smear you and destroy you and cancel you. That's what they're doing to him. And that's what they've done to a lot of us. And that's why he appeals to a lot of conservatives, frankly, because we're the ones who have been on the receiving end of this shit. <laughs> right. Brad Smith, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, this next clip of him is talking about how important it is that the U.S. continue to lead by example when it comes to free speech. Debate, congenial, respectful debate is the is the fertilizer. It's the water. It's the sunlight for our democracy. We need to be talking to each other. Now, there, this is a letter that many of you signed. Many of my fellow Democrats, I've spent my life in this party. I've devoted my life to the values of this party. There's 102 people sign this. This itself is evidence of the problem that this hearing was convened to address. This is an attempt to censor a censorship here. When they invented this democracy, we were the first one in the modern era in 1780. I, 1865, five other nations had imitated us. I Today, it's 190 nations based upon our system. We are supposed to be the exemplary democracy and the corner foundation stone of our system is freedom of speech. All of the other freedoms depend on it. If we lose that, not only do we lose our democracy in this country, but the entire world exactly. loses us as an Ex example. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and then the liberals have the audacity to point at us and scream democracy, right? You're democracy. No, y'all are. <laughs> yeah. And then the last, the last clip I have from him, um, at least in this section is when he talks about how misinformation contributed so negatively to the United States when it came to COVID and how, how, we shot ourselves in the foot, essentially, by shutting down debate about the most, you know, the treatments with the most efficacy and so on. So he's got some stats about that. And I thought this was interesting, too. It is very dangerous. And, you know, uh, uh, the congressman a minute ago said a million people have died because of mis misinformation about vaccines in this country. But in fact, our country had the worst, had one of the highest vaccination rates in the world and the worst health outcomes. We have 4.2% of the global population. We had 16% of the COVID deaths. Blacks in Haiti with a 1% vaccination rate were dying at a rate of 15 per million population. And same in Nigeria, had a 1.3 vaccination rate. They were dying at one in uh, 14 per million population, 14 per million population. In our country, blacks were dying at 3,000 per million population, 200 times the death rates in other countries, and this also throughout the world. We needed information. We should have all been sharing information openly and, and talking to the 15 million doctors through the internet who were treating patients on the front line all over the world yep. and channeling the best therapies, the most successful treatments, so that we could all figure it out. We, this is not a time in a pandemic to, uh, to you know, I'll just say this one thing. Trusting the experts is not a function 
of science. It's not a function of democracy. It's a function of religion and totalitarianism, and it does not make for a healthier population. Mm. God, Boom. Amen to that. Right? right? God, yeah. I love that. I know. It was just a remarkable, it was a great speech, mm -hmm. you know, that, like all the, I say the, the opening was great. Everything, the stuff that he said yesterday, just, it just resonated, you know, yeah. what will happen? Well, now they're going to try to smear him even more. And they're it just shows how, how low Democrats as a party have sunk because mm -hmm. they have moved so far away from the values that they used to hold that right. they're unrecognizable at mm -hmm. this point. It's yeah. just bizarre. Yeah. They're commies. <laughs> they're total commies. <laughs> they're freaking commies. You guys, that's all. I mean, that's what this is. Marxism slash communism is what it and is. Everything they say is projection. Right? Everything they say about Republicans is projection. Well, that's all in the book. It. That's in the, that's in the commie book, right? Is yeah. do that to your, do that to the people who are trying to, to keep you from implementing communism. That's what they, that's what they're doing. They're doing it right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys wanted to remind you that you can get a trial size bag of rough greens. If you've got a dog and you love your dog and you want to do the best for your dog, one of the things that you can do is make sure that they are getting rough greens, which is a green powder that you sprinkle over your dog's food. It gives them a hundred percent natural blend of vitamins and minerals, digestive enzymes, antioxidants, powerful pro probiotics, all the omega oils that they need. This is Dr. Dennis Black's baby. He's a naturopathic doctor who has worked with dogs forever and ever and ever, and he knows how to make them live their longest, best lives. Plus, your dogs are going to love this stuff. They do love they it. They really love do. It. Like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> they do love it. And you can try it for free. Why would you not want to try it for free? You can do that. You just cover shipping by going to Rough Chicks. That's R U F F Chicks. Dot com. Again, rough chicks, R U F F chicks.com. You're going to get your free trial bag of rough greens. You're going to sprinkle it on your dog's food, check it out, see how much they love it. And then you're going to be like, I'm going to need to get this routinely because this stuff is amazing. And you're going to notice changes, better energy, better coats, better breath, all of that stuff. You're going to see some changes. So check it out. Rough chicks. Dot. Plus com. they'll live longer and you want them around for us. Hello. As possible. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on to some of the more heated exchanges um, that were just remarkable. So we'll start off, we'll, we'll kick it off with the person I named myself after today, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She tried, man, she tried really hard to uh, race bait and do her, her darndest to discredit RFK Jr. Thomas Massey comes to her, uh, kind of sets her straight uh, at the end of this clip, and it's a wonderful thing to behold. Kennedy, your bizarre, unproven claim echoes that same historic slander of labeling Jews and Chinese people as a race, and that Jews, and in this case Chinese people, somehow manage to avoid a deadly illness that targets other groups for death. You do see that, yes or no? You're misstating. No, 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 no. Uh, you I, are... quoted, I quoted what you said earlier, and it, it is directly what you said. So just ask uh, me, no, yes or no. I was, I was describing an NIH-funded study. No, 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 you didn't cite any. I was, as, I was describing an NIH-funded study by Cleveland Clinic Reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. You did not <laughs> you, reference. Reclaiming uh, my Published time. in USC Mr. Medical, Chairman, which is one of... The time is mine. I'm reclaiming it. Please ask the witness to stop talking. You asked me right. a question. <laughs> reclaiming I, let me, Allow me to answer my question. Mr. Chairman, I'd like about 10 uh, seconds the back. Time, the time belongs. You are slandering me time incorrectly. To the, the time belongs time to You're saying is dishonest. Time belongs to the gentlelady from Florida. I need myself. Mr. Chairman, time belongs to the gentlelady from Florida. I'd like 15 seconds back. We will be happy to give you that. Thank you so God, much. what a hag. You did not cite any study like you are citing here now during that conversation. You referenced no study at all. You simply labeled Jews and Chinese people as a race. And you also said that somehow... They managed to avoid a deadly illness that targets other groups for death. You don't see that. You're trying to rewrite history here. So Mr. 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 Chairman, I have unanimous consent request. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for UC. I ask unanimous consent to introduce into the record a study that Mr. Kennedy just referenced. Uh, new insights into genetic susceptibility of COVID-19. Uh, the main body said that they investigated genetic susceptibility to COVID-19 by examining DNA polymorphism in ACE2 and TM. PRSS2, those are receptors for COVID in 81,000 human genomes, and they found unique genetic susceptibility across different populations. I have another uh, document that I'd like to 
ask unanimous consent. Without objection? To submit, and this is uh, from the FDA, FDA Review of Efficacy and Safety of Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 Vaccine. This is dated December 10th, 2020, and it shows that the uh, Pfizer trial and the USDA broke down the effectiveness of the vaccine into seven different racial categories because this was also a concern of theirs, and it would frankly be delinquent not to study the uh, the effects across the different but Mr. Kennedy. Oh my God. So now data is racist, right? That's interesting. <laughs> Follow the science, you guys. Oh wait, just not that science. <laughs> Follow the science over here. <laughs> I wonder if Fauci was watching this crap yesterday. Huh? I wonder if he was watching. <laughs> probably not. He's probably like on a yacht somewhere that we bought him. Right. With security. Yeah, yeah that's right. With all with of the security, security that we pay for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was awful, obviously. And totally. She needs to work on the ramen dude uh, because the hair. Yikes. Listen, I mean, my hair's not the best, but at least I work on it. <laughs> Good Lord, lady. <laughs> I think she does work on it. That's the, the problem. Like, I think she just somebody is doing actually, the wrong work. Somebody in our comments, I don't know who you are. I'm so sorry. I cannot give you credit, but somebody said, I had her hair for dinner last night. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I can't. I don't mean, show yourself at once, but that was a really good comment. <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, Brian! Oh my thank God. you, Brian. Says, "Don't mess with Massey." That's right. He swooped right. in and he was like, "I got you, RFK. Uh -huh. exactly. Let me handle her." <laughs> I mean, people. God. Um, and of course, as we mentioned, Plaskett was another just absolute cow hag, horrible c-word mm -hmm. yesterday, and here she is uh, trying to do her thing. You tried to associate me a moment ago with the replacement theory, which is racist. No, I did not say you time belongs the to the gentleman from I I said my colleagues. The time belongs to the gentleman from I denounced that theory. It is racist, and I have never endorsed it or had any association with it. Our film on a medical by the medical way, Bill apartheid? Buxton, Bill Buxton, who is the black CDC official who ultimately exposed the Tuskegee experiment, tried for years and years to appeal to, to, to CDC to stop it for 40 years. Finally, he got relief by walking into my uncle's office in the building next door. Teddy held hearings and ended the experiment. I remember that very well. And to say that, that I, I, wrote a, I created a film that encourages blacks not to get adequate medical care is just completely abhorrent if the Don't if the, use my it's words, the witness's sir. time do not yes, censor the witness i'm if not the, censoring the, the witness yeah. i'm not the, censoring the witness he's still talking it is the it's I it's my time and i've given it to the witness him. do not censor him if i'm not the, censoring him if the views that you and others have applied to me i've attributed to me if they were actually true i can see why i shouldn't be able to testify here today those are not true these are defamations and mal malignancies that are used to censor me to prevent people from listening to the actual things that I'm saying. And I think, ranking member, that we should have a real conversation rather than an exchange of ad hominem attacks. Yeah, because, I mean, you listen to the news, you listen to any, like, MSM news outlet besides Fox, yeah. and they're going to paint him as a kook. They say yeah. that. Remember when, what's his name, Jake Tapper, I think, called him, like, a... Yeah. Some yeah, sort what of a, was the word that he used? Actually. I think he used kook or something like that. Like, like, I Cr or crank or something like that. Crank or, or quack. Some, qu yeah, something like that. Something that was so derogatory and dismissive of him. And everybody, one of the things he said in this hearing yesterday was people just automatically assume that I'm anti vax. Right. He's not anti vax. He's taken vaccines. He's, I mean, if it, and a lot of us feel that way. I'm not anti vax. I just don't want to, I didn't want to take that damn vaccine. Right. I know enough about vaccines. I worked in pharma for 20 years. I know enough about vaccines to know I didn't want to take that one. So why, like, and then I was demonized for it because, you know, people want to put out there false information about people like me. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when I saw that yesterday, I thought it's, People do know him as the anti-vax guy. Why do you think that is? It's because they have had like a, a calculated smear campaign to ruin this guy. And every Democrat should be freaked out by that.
because it was calculated. Everybody right. should be freaked out by that. That's what our government is doing now. That's what our politicians, that's what the statists are doing now is they're ruining people if they don't like fall in line. That's yeah. not America, y'all. Well, the the Plaskett thing uh, rose to a crescendo <laughs> towards the end of the hearing. This was my favorite because the whininess and the, the tantrum that she is throwing here is extraordinary. For a person in Congress, it's just mind-blowing that this is how she's behaving. Check this out. I mean, if we don't have a First Amendment, it's just... Uh, I'm frightened by where we go. May, right. may I, Mr. Well, Chair? You may not. You may not. I just Mr. want Chair, to respond. Mr. Think, Chair, I don't think, time is out. We're done. I don't. I haven't adjourned the hearing, and I don't think you're the chair. I want to, Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair. Mr. Chair, I this. Chairman's discretion. I know it's Mr. your Kennedy, discretion. We're let but Mr. Kennedy. Mr. He has had so much additional time. Well, I think everyone's had why? additional time. And and why? Get, why are you doing that specifically because, for him? Because we I just don't want to explain. to other people. I'm sure the, the super pack. I'm sure the Democrat witness other places. will be as short as he possibly can. No, no. no. are you going to allow our witness to just give another piece? No, of let him address the defamatory comment that was made about him. That's untrue. There is, it. No, it was not defamatory. That is a legal definition that was not met. I want to acknowledge. It's just my amazing. favorite. Mock did like the greatest impersonation of her before we went on. You know, <laughs> we were in pre-show. I was like. <laughs> what did I do? I don't even remember. Oh I my was god! Whining. I was like, you know, how come he gets more time and I don't get more time? And no, I just why I'm are you doing like, this? Why? It's like, like Nancy talk. Kerrigan all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like talking to a five-year-old, you know, because like you give them snacks or something, and like one kid has a bigger snack, like they have yes. more fruit snacks in their bag than the other kid. It's like she didn't have as many fruit snacks. She's pissed off. She is a toddler, this chick. Oh, my God. No it's business leading anybody. Like, how did these people get elected? They just be clowned themselves. God, I don't you know look how like, to put it. I know. She makes women look like morons. They. I mean, I'm embarrassed for our gender because of these broads. <laughs> God. Um, there were other witnesses other than RFK Jr. And in fact, um, one of them, Emma Jo Morris, who is a Breitbart reporter <clears throat> and one of the first to report on the Hunter Biden laptop. She is an effing legend. Oh my God. And Rock when star. you look up the word based in the dictionary, her face <laughs> is right there. <laughs> her testimony was so great. Like she starts laughing. During She's just amazing. Y'all have to watch the whole thing if you haven't. If you haven't seen her, you have to watch the entire thing of her. It, glorious. Um, and we're going to get to her. But first, I want to um, let you hear just a little bit from another witness. This was J uh, Dr. John Sauer, who was the or is the um, assistant to the Louisiana attorney general. He also was there to testify about censorship and and has just some extraordinary points to make. Here he is. Likes to claim that social media platforms acting on their own would apply their policies and censor all this content anyway. This is demonstrably incorrect. Again and again, the Louisiana court found that the platforms would not have suppressed this speech, but for the fact that the federal officials were pushing for it. The deplatforming of Alex Berenson, the throttling of Tucker Carlson's content, the silencing of the so-called disinformation dozen, which includes Mr. Kennedy, uh, the suppression of much of the so-called borderline, which is, quote, often true content on Facebook's platforms, the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story, and much more. All these were suppressed because of the efforts of federal officials. Second, the scope and reach of federal censorship is staggering. As the Louisiana court repeatedly found, it affects, quotes, millions of social media posts and speakers all across America. It affects virtually every American who reads, listens, engages, or posts on social media about great disputed political and social questions that federal censors have stuck their fingers into. Third, federal censorship is ongoing and it shows no signs of relenting. Yikes. I know. I'm like, it should terrify everybody. Like they just, they have, these people have way too much control. We've just allowed it to get out of control and people are so complacent about it. Yeah. It's, I'm so, so glad that they had this hearing. I mean, yes, yeah, me Democrats too. were blowing it off and, and treating it like it was unimportant and worthless, but 
but hopefully, I mean, I know all kinds of people who do shows like ours, everybody's going to be talking about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so hopefully people really start to listen. Cause yeah. And start. And if wow. you miss the clips, watch the clips. Yeah. Spread the, I mean, share them mm -hmm. and, and make sure that other people see a lot of these clips, like the, the chick from Breitbart. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. And she's next. I don't know why I call that guy Dr. Sauer. I think it's because I saw the D in front of his name and I just immediately put an R with it. So but he's not okay. a doctor. That was my mistake. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's get to uh, based Emma Jo Morris. Emma Jo. <laughs> the fact that she laughed through her own testimony was <laughs> so great. Glorious. Yeah. Watch this. Facebook said it would curb distribution and reach of the links on its platform. However, the stories were not based on hacked materials, nor were they Russian disinformation. And despite those claims appearing to come out of thin air at the time, we would eventually learn that they actually didn't come out of thin air at all. On October 19th, five days after the Post began publishing, Politico ran a story headlined, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former Intel officials say. God, I can't even say that with a straight face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Politico printed a letter completely uncritically from veteran members of the U.S. intelligence community falsely claiming that the Post Exposé has, quote, all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Most notable among the signatories of that letter were Jim Clapper from former DNI, Michael Hayden, former CIA, John Brennan, former CIA, despite having such damaged credibility following their participation in the Russia collusion conspiracy theory. I just I mean, love her. Yeah. You have to watch the whole thing. It's yeah, just, it's, it's amazing. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. Her, her, her name is <laughs> Victoria. So she sounds like Daisy's little sister. We have <laughs> very similar names, Emma Joe and Amy Joe. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I don't, I think I've never, I've never met anybody named Emma Joe. Yeah. I think that's a first. It's a first. I've heard yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Elise Stefanik had an opportunity to um, question Emma Jo and brought even more light to some of the ridiculousness um, of censorship and just how she experienced it. And this was also just a really, this was just a fun exchange to watch. Ms. Morris, isn't it true that your October 2020 Hunter Biden laptop from hell story has proven to be 100% factually accurate? I was 27 when I published that story. It better have been. <laughs> Isn't it true that the FBI obtained Hunter Biden's laptop a full 10 months before your story broke? That's correct, according to the subpoena that I published. Isn't it also true that we now know that the FBI's Foreign Influence Task Force coerced social media companies into an alleged forthcoming Russian, quote, hack and leak operation, and as a result, illegally censored the Hunter Biden laptop story? Isn't that true? Yes. And this forced censorship by government agencies like the FBI was paid for by the taxpayer since the taxpayers fund the FBI. Isn't that uh, true? Yes. And Hunter Biden's laptop from hell, it has everything. It's a hellhole and cesspool of corruption and criminal conduct. It has hard drugs, prostitution, pornography, money laundering. It has Biden family shell companies, communist Chinese, corrupt foreign government deals from tens of millions of dollars in exchange for access to the Biden family. The Hunter Biden laptop from hell has all of this, correct? Yeah. And the American people are smart. They know that this was not a hack and dump. This was illegal government censorship to protect and prop up Joe Biden on the eve of the 2020 election. And according to polling, of people who were now made aware of the Hunter Biden laptop story, 53% would have changed their vote, including 61% of Democrats. So do you agree that the censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story was determinative in the 2020 election, Ms. Morris? Yeah, there are various polls that say that um, that there would have been a change in the outcome of the election, and obviously it's immediately relevant to a decision on who to vote for, so obviously. And do you believe that this government censorship was election interference? Yes. Any, any censorship of speech prevents um, your ability to think clearly. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yep. the Republican. Oh, sorry. <laughs> She's a, that, that lady's a badass. 
I mean, she's just the, I just love her. Mm -hmm. I love her. We need more people like her. So many more. We need to clone her. Yeah. So after the hearing, uh, minority leader Hakeem Jeffries was super butthurt, just like all the other Democrats were. Mm -hmm. And so he got up to his little podium to talk about what a waste of time all of the hearings were. Oh. And then specifically to criticize uh, RFK Jr. And this was pretty amazing to check this out. Congress are a malignant clown show. That's what he called the hearings. <laughs> Why would you give Robert F. Kennedy Jr. a congressional platform to spew his hatred? Here's the answer. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is a living, breathing, false flag operation. <laughs> My God, these people are so unhinged. This and is what? the new theory, though. They, they're saying that RFK Jr.'s very existence is planned and orchestrated by Republicans in order to get Trump to win the election. And even Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is like, what? I want to win the election. I'm not trying to help Trump. I don't even agree <laughs> with Trump on anything. It's so, so funny to me. <laughs> they're just so crazy because they don't have, they, they're losing control, right? Yeah. If they I don't have so. control. If they don't have, I, yeah, me too. If they don't, if they don't have complete control of the narrative of everything, they can, they freak out. They just can't, they can't handle it because they've had control for so long. People are starting to see that they're full of crap. It's like people are waking up. People are starting to wake up and they're starting to go, wait a second. These people run all of this. Like this is all propaganda. They're, they lie to me every day. They, it's the status have control. I mean, it's like they're starting to, it's all unraveling, I think. And they don't like that. They're yeah. freaking out. And it's in real time. And I'm so here for it. <laughs> it's so great. It I know. Really is. It's just, I, man, I, when I posted RFK Jr.'s speech on our website yesterday, my headline for it said, just take the damn red pill already. Right. <laughs> because, I mean, he's, he's so speaking conservative mm -hmm. language right now. Right. I just wish that he would turn on some of the other issues that he's very, like he's, you know, he's in favor of affirmative action. And I'm just like, what? Are why? Why? Yeah. Why? Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right. So anyway, check that mm -hmm. out. Check all of that out. Listen to her whole opener. Listen to his whole opener. Just make sure that you do those things. We need to move on. A uh, couple clips from Joe Biden yesterday who really, really, really wants you to know that he is not joking and he is not kidding. Uh, first, <laughs> he's not joking and not kidding about being in the Gulf. Today. We announced the first ever offshore wind sail in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to the Gulf. We're going to the Gulf. I think I'm kidding. <laughs> Ain't seen nothing yet. The largest investment to combat climate ever, ever anywhere in the world. Over $368 billion. We know the urgency. I don't hear many naysayers on climate deny the floods heat waves, wildfires spoke, packing so many Americans just this week alone, it's just spontaneous. We also have solutions. A lot of my friends in organized labor know when I think climate, I think jobs. I think union jobs, not a joke. Not a joke. Not a joke. This, this not moment a joke. got of a bit of attention. <laughs> It's not a joke, you guys. He's not joking. You guys, we're going to the Gulf. Get in my van, my creepy <laughs> van. We're going to the Gulf, you guys. Oh, my God. God. This is our president. I sent that one clip to my older kids yesterday. And they just wrote back like WTF. <laughs> like how, how, they're they're just as afraid as I am. Like they're just like, get this guy out of office. And right. they're in their 20s, just so that if that gives you some indication of what's happening out there in the real world. Yeah. Well, the um, <laughs> as part of Biden's administration, John Kirby uh, was on with Martha McCallum yesterday. And you guys remember the clip that we played of Joe Biden with uh, the Israeli president the other day where he's like, look, he looks like he's asleep and yeah. mumbling in his sleep. <laughs> so that clip has obviously gotten a ton of attention because it was so insane. So Martha McCallum asked John Kirby to address it. Listen to his answer about what the F was going on with Joe Biden. It's amazing. This this moment got of a bit of attention, um, and it's not the only one that is kind of like this that we sometimes see, and I just want to play it for you. Sure. And we brought Israelis and Palestinians together at a political level, and they uh, 
and, uh, and, and the, uh, and, Look at the president. Uh, Look at the Israeli uh, really president. And uh, as I uh, affirmed to Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday, America's commitment to Israel is firm. John, this got a lot of attention. It got picked up in a lot of places. Why is it so hard to understand what, what the president is trying to say there? I think he was very, very clear, Martha. Uh, first of all, our commitment to, iron, to, to Israel's security is ironclad, not going to change. That doesn't mean that we don't have concern. Oh, God. <laughs> he was very clear, Martha. I mean, How he couldn't be clear. That? How? He's <laughs> as clear as KJP is on a regular basis. He was clear. Oh, my God. Clear as mud, you guys. I just cannot. I mean, what? <laughs> they will cover. I think he was the, very clear. He was clear. Don't you speak that? Visiting <laughs> angels, America's choice, home care. <laughs> just is amazing. All right. Moving on to some goodness because, I, I, listen, you guys know that I am a fan of Governor uh, DeSantis. Um, and so he and Casey were on with Ainsley Earhart yesterday and the interview was fantastic. So I wanted to share some best ofs of the interview because, you know, a lot of people right now are talking about Casey being Ron DeSantis's secret weapon. <laughs> Um, and they are just a lovely couple. So, so first you're going to hear, um, Ainsley asked the question, like, why are you running right now? Why, why couldn't you just let Trump be the guy and you run, you stay governor and let, and then run in 2028. And so here is the answer to that question. And they love him down there. So we asked him also, you know, why now, why not stay governor? Why not give Donald Trump the opportunity? And then you run after that. This was his response. I'm not running to be somebody. I'm running to do something. I think 2024 is make or break for this country. This country is in decline. And I'm not somebody that's uh, uh, content to nibble around the edges. I'm not trying to just manage America and decline a little bit better than, than Biden and the Democrats. I want to reverse the decline. I don't think we'd have an opportunity to do that in 2028. You know, so I have a responsibility to step up. If I'm the guy that can get it done, beat the Democrats, get all this done up in Washington, you know, that's going to put this country on an entirely different trajectory. And it's a great answer. I mean, I don't know how that, yeah, I don't know how you don't see that as a great answer. <laughs> right. He also was asked about Trump debating and whether or not that's something that he cares about or if, it, if it's just something that he's ignoring. Here's what he said. Do you want Trump to participate or is this a time if he doesn't participate for you to shine? Oh, I think I, I think we'll do well either way. But I mean, I think he, he owes it to people to participate. Nobody is entitled to be nominated. You've got to earn it. You've got to earn everything in this world. So I think you show up. I think you participate. I think you make your case. And I think you I think you answer questions. So we're going to be doing that regardless of who else shows up. But, yeah, I think he ought to I think he ought to participate. I agree. One hundred and fifty percent. Anybody who wants to be my president needs to show up and participate. I don't care who you are. Show up for me. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, Casey had a chance to say um, how she would describe her husband, and here's what she said. Describe your husband. I would describe him as the love of my life, the father of my six, five, and three-year-old, and the fighter that we need to turn this country around. I make this assumption that people know who he is, and there are truths that they don't know, that he served in the United States Navy, that he was a JAG officer, that he deployed to Iraq in 2007 with the Navy SEAL Team Command Staff, SEAL Team 1, for the troop surge on the ground. He got the Bronze Star for Meritorious Service. I think what's important about that story of him serving, he saw 9-11, and he wanted to give back to the country that had given him so much, and that is why he decided to serve in the United States military. It says a lot about who he is. Is, and I think it says a lot about how he views the country. Governor, they say she's the secret sauce. <laughs> is this true? Is she your best asset? Well, she, um, I, I think at the end of the day, she's just a very genuine person. She really believes in this country. She really cares about the country's future because of our three young kids is six, five and three. When she does things like rally mothers, like she did throughout the state of Florida and grandmothers, since it is Florida, <laughs> we want to include them. Big and contingency now, in the villages. And, and now she's doing it around the country. Uh, it's because a lot of the issues that these parents are facing, we're facing. Uh, we're in the same boat. Uh, we're, we're very sympathetic to that. And so she is somebody that is very, very strong on the, the rights of parents and the well-being of children. And then 
it got emotional. So they talked about uh, Casey's cancer diagnosis and how they struggled through that. And she gets very emotional during this. We both have this this calling, and you probably know my story, right? Um, about a year and a half ago, I didn't know whether I was going to see my kids graduate from kindergarten. So October 2021, you're diagnosed with breast cancer. Today, you're cancer-free, yes. by the grace of God, thank goodness. Walk me through that day when you heard those words from your doctor and, and what happened after that. Well, you know, w anybody will say with a cancer diagnosis, when you start hearing those words, it's not definitive right out of the gate. It is, we see something that is problematic. And the really hard part for me was that I had a four, a three-year-old and a one-year-old in the God house. Bless her. And it's like very, very difficult. When you look at your children and they don't know, and you know, Ainsley, to this day, they still don't know. They have no idea what mama went through. As a matter of fact, when I was going through six rounds of chemotherapy, six weeks of radiation and three surgeries, couldn't really use my left arm a lot of times. So I told him, I was like, I just hurt my arm because he didn't want to tell him. But through God's grace, I'm here. And yeah, this, we, guy, I remember we, uh... this guy helped me more than you will ever realize. She's, I love how she's like patting him. I know. She's trying. You know what I mean? It's like a, I just, it's like, I know that's a weird thing to point out, but that's like what people, you know, when you love your, you, you lean on somebody like that. You're like, okay, I got to get through this interview. I'm going to like hit your leg. You know what I mean? Cause I don't know if I can get through this. Yeah. And that's what she was doing. They seem, they seem like a really neat couple mm -hmm. and she seems like a super, I mean, she is a super strong woman. And um, she doesn't deserve the the crap that she gets, just like Melania didn't deserve it, just like any conservative woman doesn't deserve it. But she especially, she's been through a hell of a lot. Yeah. And, um, and she's awesome. She'd be, a, she'd be a great first lady. She really yeah, would she, be. I mean, it's like they were just written for the part, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, they just, they look great. They've got these perfect children. Like everything about their family unit is so idyllic. <laughs> Just yeah, but you wouldn't, but you wouldn't believe the people like on the left, and I've seen even people on the right who are just who hate DeSantis, um, will point out the cancer stuff, and they'll be like, "Oh, she's just using that," or she's, you know, or did she even have cancer? Oh, my I've seen, God. I've actually seen uh, like posts on that, oh and I'm like, God. these people will stop at nothing. They will just. Uh, Sometimes I just have to put the laptop down. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> just go. These people are insane. Yeah. But, um, but they're, no, they're they great. weren't written for the, I mean, come on. I don't even know what that means. Like what now somebody was like, that's exactly it. They were written for this part. Oh my God. Like there's some sort of, is there like a wizard of Oz? Like there's somebody behind a curtain scripting them? No, they've, I'm sure that, listen, if we, if we saw like a Vivek, if we saw Vivek and his wife, I'm sure Darling. that she's absolutely brilliant and delightful too. And gorgeous. And yeah. yeah, it's exactly. And they would, she also would make a wonderful first lady. Yeah. You know, this is perfect family. Right. I mean, it's like, we've got wonderful people on our side. And that's, I think that's the point here is that it's not just one person. However, I think there was a clip that, we're, I know we're, we'll, hopefully we'll get to it, but there was a clip yes. that I pulled right after this. this. Okay, good. All right. Um, so <clears throat> this last clip, obviously you can see just from this still, uh, this is not new because <laughs> this is when he was a little heftier, right? He was. was he has yeah. lost weight. He's lost so much weight. So I've been wanting to play this, but there hasn't really been a, the right time. And I thought, well, now that we've got Casey being emotional, maybe it's time to show Ron being emotional. And this was back in 2020 when he finally was like sick and tired of all of the lockdowns. He was sick of all of these rules that were arbitrarily being made, particularly the ones saying you can't visit your family members who are dying in long-term assisted care or in, in whatever. So at this conference, this press conference back in 2020, this is when he'd had enough and he started to go on, you know, go on his own, his own way, open up Florida and he was basically talking about why he decided, yes, people can come and visit their loved, one, loved ones again in the long-term care facilities. And he gets very emotional. Part of having a healthy society is understanding that you know, human beings seek affection, that you have family members who, uh, and many of the folks understand that they have loved ones who are in the last stage of their life. Um, they're not 
demanding a medical miracle. They're not uh, having unrealistic expectations. They just would like to be able to say goodbye or to, to hug somebody. So it, it was, you know, He needs her leg to, to hit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think it's difficult um, to think that some of our actions may have prevented. So do you want to? Thank you. Yeah, that was, I know, right? I don't think anybody ever sees that side of him. Though. You know what I mean? They're like, he has no personality. He's just copying. He's a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's God. a Nazi now. Everybody. That is what, except for I the actual know. Nazis. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So the clip that, uh, that you were just referring to, this is because everything seems to be so favorable towards Republicans right now. You would think well, that yeah. this next election, we should just run away with it. Because look at our country. Look right? at, just take a look around. Everything is a dumpster fire. Everything. And so, yeah. So, I mean, this should be a shoe in. And it, it should be just the, the easiest election ever for us to win. Seriously, in my lifetime, this should be the easiest one because this the country has never been more in shambles than it is like right now in my lifetime. <laughs> so yeah, you'd think. It's not going to be though. Mm -hmm. um, and here's a pretty good explanation as to why. A Republican pollster named Matt Towery with the insider advantage. And he said a week or so ago that he thinks it's more likely than not that the Democrats are going to keep the White House, retake the House, and keep the Senate. Now, why is that? Because the typical Republican voter, contrary to what Republican leaders believe, really doesn't know very much, and he doesn't vote. Now, you take the typical Democrat voter, who's dumber than a box of rocks, he votes. And that's why Joe Biden is going to win in 2024. Now, the, the, the voting problem is Rana McUseless. I said on that. It's true. He's absolutely right about that. <laughs> and he's, but he's right about the voting thing, too. I've mm -hmm. seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand in my community. It's true. Everybody's saying no because they cheat. You guys, it's also because we don't vote. Now, y'all probably vote. But I promise you, I've seen it. I've seen it in Texas. There are a lot of, there are so many Republicans who sit their ass at home and don't vote. They'll complain about how the country is in shambles and how they don't like the way things are going. But when push comes to shove and that day comes and they're supposed to get up and vote, they don't vote. Yeah. And so I'm just letting you, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. I hate that he's right. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably mm -hmm. right. And I hate it. Yeah. Um, okay. So we need something positive, right? Yeah. And so what we're going to have, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of public square. Um, public square is basically this conglomeration of businesses that have the same ideals and the same ideology, the same values uh, that conservatives share. And they're trying to provide a competitive, a, a competition to the Amazons of the world, right? They went public uh, and rang the bell on Wall Street yesterday. <laughs> and it happened during a CNBC broadcast when they're trying to talk about housing prices and all their wonky stuff. And it was this amazing display of patriotism, a very loud display of patriotism that got in the way a bit of the broadcast. Here it is. Increases in the Fed. Sales are so much higher than they have been. Yes, and these guys, you know, these 8,800 uh, this quarter. The main thing you need to know, though, and I think really important, is that home prices are up 40 percent since 2019, and that's the magic number that the Fed is upset about. 40 percent increase, and this says, listen, we are going to have more homes, but you're not going to get that price come up. Isn't that awesome? They're like, at home prices. Ah, rah, rah. <laughs> he's trying so hard to do his broadcast. And he's like, I know, I love I it. I can't. There's too much patriotism. They should what they should have done is just stopped 
and like acknowledge that that was happening, but they can't do that. They can't know? do that. They and but wanna. doesn't that show that people are sick and tired of all the crap that's happening, and they want patriotism back? They want it back. I mean, don't don't we all like normal people? Normal people are like that's just it though. We're running out of those. <laughs> <laughs> We're running low on normal people, y'all. We are. We're running I mean, the low. amount of crazy I see on social media is so just much. Oh I my know. god, it's astounding. I know, but my whack today just shows it. Yes, yeah. which is a perfect segue. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, do you want to set this up? Oh god, you guys. Okay, so at first I didn't know if I was allowed to show this because there's nudity in it, but you can't really tell because it's like the ladies of Sharpay. So. <laughs> You can't really see. Uh, so you may want, if you want to like hide your kids, hide your wives, hide your dogs, you can do that, but you can't really see much except for the complete lunacy that is this clip. I don't know yeah. where it is. I have no idea where this woman is, but she is just in a bakery at some grocery store having herself the time eating, going through some cakes. She just wanted a cake, you guys. She doesn't even want to eat it. She just no. wants to smash it against her boobs. How she got icing on her ass. I have no idea how that even occurred. Oh, she's ended up, did she turn it around? Is she? I showed this to my husband yesterday and I was like, Do you, what is going on here? And he goes, the fact that nobody's doing anything. They're videotaping it. <laughs> right. It's such a commentary on our society. He's like, I would do something. Yeah. He goes, I would like, seriously, you have to do something. We have to do as, as citizens, we're not, Yes, she needs help, obviously. But I mean, like, it took a long time. I mean, this this clip is like five minutes long. I mean, it goes yeah. on. And God only knows how long it was going on before somebody started filming it. And right. there's just destruction all over the grocery store. She has just caused like a trail of destruction. She has gone through and just destroyed stuff. And nobody stops her. Nobody. They just call the cops. They wait for the cops to get there. It probably takes 10, 15 minutes for the cops to get there, right? Yeah. I mean, I just, it's astounding. This woman is just, it's crazy. She just, I know people are like, she just so wanted to take. Let there's her so have so much of like the zombies walking around yeah. all the city streets. And, and I just, and I, so if, gross. and if I walk into a grocery sh store, I shouldn't be subjected to that. Yeah. I don't want to see, uh, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see a <laughs> Sharpay lady, you know, eating cake naked if what if i'm with my children like that's it's terrifying one two it's like it's not this is not what we're supposed to be doing in civilized society and we are accepting more and more of this uncivilized behavior not okay yeah totally not okay yeah make it make mental institutions great again somebody for said. real can we, we just to. start opening them up again yeah please? yesterday mm -hmm. for example i saw on tiktok not making this up a dude, very much a dude, like beard, you know, dude, like the, the, whatever the Adam's at, like a hundred percent dude. <laughs> and he was saying, this is just the level of crazy that we're at now. He was saying, I am a male. I was born male. I present as a male. He called it, um, I'm a, ma I'm masculine presenting. I think That's is how we're crying out loud. I, I think is how they term it now. Yeah. I am masculine presenting. However, I have always wanted a vagina. So I got one. So now he no longer, he lopped off his dingly dangly in favor of a vagina, which he'll now have to dilate manually for the rest of his entire life. But the crazy part is that he's going to stay male. He just wants, he a doesn't want to identify as a woman. He doesn't want to be a woman. He just wants that body part. So this is now... This is a not a, a gender identity thing. This is a fetish. Yeah, and this a doctor, a sick and a, freaking fetish. And a doctor did that, or is going to do it? A doctor, a yeah. medical doctor, is like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and and do that for you. I mean, I, I mean, saw she, that, and I was just like, I'm done. <laughs> like, I just like, right. give up. I don't know how to. I can't process this level of crazy anymore. And it's it probably so dumb and legit. He probably goes into a doctor, and it takes three minutes for the doctor to go. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> Let's do this thing. God. I just <laughs> this seems fine. <laughs> it's insane. This is our world. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. All right. It is time for some my pillow talks. And uh, you guys, there are still, we're still in the throes of celebrating the 20th anniversary uh of my pillow. And um, 
I think I can't remember who I think it was Robin who wrote us yesterday and said, you know what you should remind people about? You should remind people that Mike Lindell has a heart of gold and that when all the hurricanes took place in Florida and cities were devastated, he sent thousands of pillows. Yeah. Thousands. He, he just mm -hmm. donates them, even though his company is being canceled left and right. That's the kind of person that Mike Lindell is. So please support us. Please support us in our support of him and get yourself something while they have the huge sales going on right now for their 20th anniversary at mypillow.com slash uh, do I have anybody? Yes, I do have to thank some people. GCQC, thank you. She says visiting angels ought to be sponsoring y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they really should. I know. And they then Paul totally Cox, should. thank you very, very much for thank those. You. Thank you. Thank y'all. All right. Um, let's have, oh, I love this because it's bears. And what I love about bears most <laughs> is when they stand up and walk like people. And I love it most when it's baby bears that yeah. stand up and walk like people. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. The cutest. Look at the kid is like losing her mind. <laughs> I love it. He just walked. He just walked like a person, just, man. Yeah. I love that. Also, I found a group on TikTok yesterday whose sole purpose in life it's a, it's a group of people who play various instruments, right? And so now they've gotten together and all kinds of band instruments and they go and they like hide in the bushes and in the trees at various parks. And then they come out and they start chasing people with music, uh, whether they're biking <laughs> or running and they, it is what? hilarious. So I will give you this uh, example. Oh my God. Here is what I'm talking about. He is at like a full force. <laughs> He's in a sprint, you guys. <laughs> so that is the voodoo brass the, band. If the you tuba player is like, seriously, I got to sprint with this thing? I got a tuba, man. <laughs> they did another one where... <laughs> <laughs> just like emerged out of this giant thing of bushes. There was this woman jogging and they started playing the Rocky themes. <laughs> I would and love that. Just the best oh thing ever. God, I love them great. so much. Oh my God. I love them. <laughs> All right. So this guy is a fantastic celebrity voice impersonator. And so he is doing a bit with various, a whole bunch of different celebrities um, on celebrities arguing with their spouses in the car. So that's how he set this up. Okay. And here he is impersonating various people. And now celebrities arguing with their spouses in the car. No, I don't know. No, do I care what <laughs> your sister had to say? Yes, okay. Yes, I forgot to get your face moisturizer. The moisturizer makes special for your face. Face moisturizer. <laughs> well, I don't have to go downtown. Why are we arguing like dogs and cats living together? Yes, that's an excellent point you're making. But remember, <laughs> if you will, um, I uh, 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 took out the trash. Yes, I did. Now, I'm not saying you're wrong, Michelle. Uh, I, I'm saying that, oh, okay. I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, that seems like a really bad idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty dumb. And if I could uh, uh, tell you uh, something personally, it would be to shut up. <laughs> and now celebrities <laughs> arguing with their spouse. That was really good. He's, He's good. really good. Like I'm really, really fascinated good. by those people. That's hard to do. <laughs> I know. It really is. I it's only amazing. do Bernie, and it's not good. <laughs> That's all. That's the only one I do, and it's not good, you guys. <laughs> right. Um. Also, so the whole Carly Russell, now that we know that that was a big fat hoax, mm -hmm. there are lots and lots of hilarious videos being made about that. For example, <laughs> this guy is imitating uh, Carly Russell practicing her scream for when she kidnaps herself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Ah! Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, no, that's 
sucker. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna go. Okay. Ah! Ah! That's the one. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's probably exactly what she did <laughs> and so this guy also a voice impersonator does the best denzel washington that you are ever gonna hear listen to this ladies and gentlemen of the courtroom i stand here telling you that my client may not be a victim of kidnapping <laughs> but she is a victim of lack of attention <laughs> It's not that she wanted to disappear, no, but she wanted to be more visible. At the head bob. Mm. I know. It's so Her methods, I guarantee you, they're unorthodox. I can guarantee you that. I stand here believing that they are unorthodox my methods. God. But my client, just like everybody else. Huh? What do you do when you go on vacation? Huh? <laughs> you go somewhere far from your usual and then you take pictures post them on social media in order to be seen it's not more so that you wanted to get away but it's that the fact that you wanted to be seen huh in a new place my client wanted to be seen oh my god he's remarkable right just just he's amazing so good he even does like the head like the everything he's got it down all of it <laughs> um also in case anybody ever wanted to know what itsy bitsy baby hummingbirds in their nest look like oh i got you all right this is gonna be one of the cutest things you've ever seen hummingbird nest hummingbirds <laughs> In their nest. Oh my god. Oh my god. They are so cute. Aren't they? They really are. The tiniest of nests. They're all snuggled in there. <laughs> cute, right? The very so cute. cute. Right. Very oh cute. My god. So cute. People are saying Tony Bennett died. What? Yeah. Somebody said Jamie Foxx died? No. No. I there was like video of him up and around and waving at people and being completely fine. So I don't know. Tony Bennett? That. Really? Should we confirm that? Should I look? I, I saw tons and tons of people saying it. Um, I'm assuming that that's true. Tony true. Bennett, he dies 96 years old, you guys. Wow. Yeah. 96 iconic singer. Yeah. Oh my God. He was born August 3rd, 1926, you guys. Wow. He's lived a life. Yeah, he has. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has. 96. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Well, well that's, that's a good long life. Well, thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, thanks for letting us know that, mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah. Are we going right. to... Those are your talks. Are you getting up? Come here. Yes, he up? is. Look at him just getting right up. He's like, I'm going to stretch first, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to give mom my kit. Come here. <laughs> give mom my kit. Oh, you got to give me your face. You got to give me your face. Come here. Come here. Come here. your face. Come here. Come here. Oh, there it was. Big Friday <laughs> flaps for you guys. Huge I flaps on a Friday. It. He's such a big boy. Okay. <laughs> I know everybody, people want to see Coda. I, at some point, I will bring him in here. He just, he will like run in here. Like he'll get a galloping start and run and jump. And then he'll start hitting stuff on my keyboard <laughs> with his giant paws. And so I don't know if I want to do that right now, but we'll, um, maybe we can plan on doing that next week. Okay. And if right. you're an insider or supporter on Locals, you got to see video of him. You did. We, yeah, you got so. to see how completely gigantic he is. Yes. There's benefits to he's, our subscriptions. He's a good boy. He's a really good boy. You guys, are we bring, are we, did we already bring it in? We didn't bring it in. I did not. If okay. you did, I missed it. You guys it. have <laughs> the most fantastic weekend, and we will talk to you on Monday.